Welcome to another spicy episode of Monday Movie Pickup. Okay, so uh, not too many things this week, but still a few things that are worth talking about. The first one is pretty random. So this one is a movie with uh, sort of not well-known Western actor from the 30s and maybe 40s cinema. Uh, this is Gun Code, uh, starring Tim McCoy, who is the said actor. This is actually a double feature with another movie called Black Mountain Stage. And um, the reason I got this was because this movie, Gun Code, um, I went on the letterbox. I was just digging through some different movies, and uh, it's pretty rare to find a movie on letterbox that is, you know, uh, actually made by a studio not an indie feature not something made just for the internet not something that someone just uploaded to the site no like an actual movie that no one has seen well gun code is it uh this was a movie that's on letterbox no one has ever seen it there is no views for it so um i thought hey this movie from i believe it was it's 1939 um, I'd like to check it out, and just so I can be the only person on Letterboxd who's seen it. It's not on YouTube, weirdly enough. I believe, I'm not sure if it's public domain, but it feels like it should be. Or at least someone should have uploaded it to YouTube, you'd figure, but nope. And it's only on DVD. I guess it makes sense that it hasn't been uploaded to YouTube because there's no one on Letterboxd who has seen it. So, um, pretty soon I'll be the only person on Letterboxd who have seen it. We have here My Cousin Vinny. This is actually my uh, mom's favorite movie, uh, which I've never seen for some reason. We always owned a DVD copy of it at home, but I, I never really took the time to actually watch it. But this is one that, yeah, my mom loves it. My mom has talked about this movie numerous times. And, um, you know, and, and in recent years, I've actually heard the movie brought up more often um, as kind of a cult favorite. I, I guess I never really, you know, heard anybody else talk about it besides my mom. So um, in recent years, it's kind of cool that more people have mentioned it, um, especially for Joe Pesci and uh, Marissa Tomei. Uh, Marissa Tomei was actually nominated, might have even won for this movie. Um, I, I gotta remember, because... Yeah, it was for this movie. She won. I don't know why I always forget that, but I think that was always considered a pretty surprising win. Like, did she really deserve the win for this movie? But ask my mom, and yeah. And there's been other people who have said, yeah, she deserved it. But I, I guess what else was there in 1992 that um, someone else besides her should have won? I guess I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to finally give that a watch. I have another here, another family favorite technically this is actually my uncle's favorite movie he actually let me watch it for the first time uh, many years ago he only has a VHS copy of that and um, I think at the time I was like hey why don't you get it on DVD he's like I, I have a VHS of it and I was like all right fair enough um, so uh, yeah uh, this does have a blu-ray release and um, this is another one that don't hear a lot of people talk about it nowadays but um, was definitely um, liked at the time for you know, being a return to the Western. Uh, this was the early 90s where it wasn't really a genre that people were touching upon anymore, but Unforgiven had come out uh, the year before, so I'm gonna guess there was maybe a connection there as to why Touchstone uh, decided to uh, make their own Western. Uh, but, you know, this is a movie that Val Kilmer's performance especially has been praised, so uh, I remember watching it. Uh, I definitely need to watch it again, and I figured might as well own it on Blu-ray. Uh, I have some DC stuff here. So this is Batman Hush, which I uh, didn't own. Uh, I did a little quick vlog about all the Batman movies that there are on Blu-ray and how I try to collect them, but it's very confusing because there's several different universes and there's just the one-off films, there's the Lego films, there's just a bunch of different stuff. Um, but Batman Hush is actually an animated film that was only released in the last two or three years, and this is one that a lot of people ended up liking. This is actually considered one of the better Batman animated films, so very excited to give this a watch and um, to help complete my Batman collection. But while I saw that at the store, I also saw this other movie, um, Superman Red Sun, which, you know, I, I would love to go for the Justice League and Superman movies and other DC animated films once I finish Batman. Uh, but I saw this and I was like, I can't pass this up. There's something just about... Uh, I, I love movies that go back to the Soviet Union and, you know, just kind of alternate realities of what could have been. 
uh, whatever happened with the actual events of the Cold War, if there was, like, alternate universes. And this is now a case where they're taking a fictional character, and they're like, hey, instead of landing in Kansas, what if he landed in Russia? And, you know, that alone is, like, that's a plot. That's all I need. I am very curious about this. It's just whole... Um, it almost seems like a joke movie, like something they would air on Family Guy or something as like a real quick cut scene, like what if Superman was actually from Russia, but here's a whole movie of it. I'm sure it's a comic book. Um, you know, I, I, like I, you, many of you probably know, I don't read a lot of comic books or keep up with, uh, what's going on in the comic book industry, but I'm sure it's a comic book. Uh, but you know, this film and the plot alone, like interests me. So, uh, <laughs> definitely excited to give that one a watch. And then last but not least, I do have the Looney Tunes Bugs Bunny collection, which, you know, last few episodes I was going over the Platinum collection of Looney Tunes, and I was finally completing that set. There were three releases of that. And um, in the last couple of years, there hasn't been any other uh, Blu-ray releases after Volume 3, but for Bugs Bunny's uh, 80th anniversary, they decided to finally release another Blu-ray set. And I believe this actually contains some shorts that are not on the other three volumes uh, that they did for the Platinum Collection. Um, this is, of course, all Bugs Bunny-centric stuff. Some of these do appear on the other three sets, but like I said, there's some newer ones on here, uh, some, of, some of which I, I don't believe are on HBO Max yet. It does come with a Funko Pop, which I, I really had no interest in. I, like I've said in another vlog, don't really want to be collecting Funkos like a crazy man, uh, but it came with the set. Uh, it was a lower price on Amazon after it was initially released with a higher price. Amazon lowered the price recently, but they still have it in this collectible set. I don't know if they're going to do a separate release where it's just the standalone Blu-ray without the Funko, but I was like, whatever, I'll get it. Uh, I'm sure people will be in the comments like, well, are you going to sell it? No, I, I'll keep it in the box. I just, I like I said, I, that's not why I really bought it, because it was just a low enough price. Um, but... And also, I don't want to risk it, because I'm not sure if it's going to come as a Blu-ray-only release. But here's the Blu-ray. It's possible it will, because, you know, this box was made uh, just to enclose the Funko Pop and the Blu-ray. So it's possible that they do intend to release this separately. But I just know on the side of the box, yeah, this is um, limited edition. Uh, and this is, if you can read that there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Yeah. So that's... Um, 19,896 out of 30,000 that they're releasing, which, uh, I don't know, nowadays for Blu-ray, that might seem like a lot because not a lot of people buy Blu-ray nowadays, but then you got to think about all the people who are fans of Looney Tunes, all the people who are like me, who are buying a bunch of Blu-rays. Um, there might be just enough. I uh, got to get rid of that digital code, but yeah, it does come with three discs like the Platinum sets. And, uh, I don't know, it's just cool. It's cool that they decided to do that. I don't know if they're going to do that with the other characters. I mean, granted, it, uh, Bugs Bunny had an 80th anniversary release, so it's possible for the other characters who will be hitting 80th anniversaries. Maybe they'll do a set. Maybe they'll do a Daffy Duck set, Tweety Bird, and a Sylvester set. Um, I don't know. I, I could see them possibly doing it, especially for Daffy Duck. I could really see that happening, but... Uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how successful this set does itself, but uh, it was really cool to get this. Um, I will probably leave the Blu-ray case out of this box. I'll probably just display the box up there somewhere, but uh, real cool stuff. And um, yeah, was real happy to see that this went for a lower price now on Amazon. So uh, that was everything this week. You know, more superhero stuff, more random movies, and more Looney Tunes. I haven't ordered anything currently, so uh, this might it might be a while before I see you again, but I will definitely be doing more videos, uh, just showcasing different things I own in the collection, and then once I buy some new things, you'll be the first to hear about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video, and special shout out to Anthony, Anna, Kirsten, Lucas, Ryan, and Robert for the support on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive videos and blogs, and for only $7, you can request your own movie review. I hope you stick around, cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.